Amen, amen. Welcome to the TNBC Tuesday night Bible class. Tuesday night Bible class. Amen. Come on, give God some praise this evening. Tonight we're going to continue. We started off last week with our Bible class. I'm excited about it. I, I love teaching this book, The Bait of Satan. It's really been very informative to myself and life changing. And one thing about God's word, if you listen with the ear of the spirit, you hear God speaking to you a word to change your life. Good evening, Sister Sam. God bless you. And one thing about the Word of God, it's very power-packed when it comes to the strongholds of the flesh. It has the ability to tear down walls. It has the, the power to destroy the works of the devil in our lives. And it's up to you to determine in yourself when you're going to surrender, submit, yield yourself to the will of God, or resist and oppose him and make things harder on yourself. So I want you will stand and with me. We're going to go into a word of prayer. And then we're going to um, go into our, our lesson tonight. We're in chapter 6 of the book, The Bait of Satan. And we're going to deal with this, deal with offenses as well, about blaming and deferring somebody else. So, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for your blessing, health, and strength. I thank you, Lord God, for the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives to will and do according to your good pleasure. We thank you, Lord God, for this gathering as we come to share your word once again, oh God. Speak to our hearts by divine revelation, oh God. A, a rainbow word from the low, God, that will help change our hearts, change our minds, change our attitudes. That our lives are right with your word, oh God, that you will get the glory. Forgive us for our sins, knowing and knowing thee, Father God. Cleanse us our minds from the business of the day that we focus on you, oh God, that you will speak to our hearts, oh God, to help empower us by the Spirit, to walk in, in the Spirit, not in the flesh. We give you thanks, we give you praise, oh God, because we're glorified that we, your people, learn how to hear your word, be quick to hear and slow to speak, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. We praise you, oh God, that you're faithful to your word to heal and deliver God. Somebody might need healing today, oh God. Touch by your spirit today, oh God. Let your presence minister, God, and deliver and set us free from the inside out. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Those of you in the house of the Lord. Welcome those of you on Facebook. Welcome again to the Bible class tonight. God bless you, Cousin Jackie. Thank you for joining tonight. If you don't have any questions on Facebook, even in the house of God tonight, feel free to raise your hand or give some type of indication. Even write your question on Facebook. If you have a question, write your question on Facebook, and we will answer your question according to the Word of God tonight. So tonight I want to talk about chapter 6. We talked about Holy Week on last week. We talked about many different things on last week concerning the Word of God. And yet, many times we find ourselves isolated by the things of the world that distracts and hinders us from walking in the purpose God has for our lives. So God wants us to be aware of how our attitudes are when it comes to the Word of God. I, I found something that's so, so uh, vital and it's very important as a child of God. I want to read this. It's in, it's in my book. I have another book I've been studying. Again, I read it several years ago. And recently, the Lord was dealing with my heart concerning habits, about bad habits I deal with in my own personal life. And it says, Lord, help me break this habit. Lord, help me break this habit. Yeah, yeah. And I found something. I've been reading this book. I started reading it again, and I found this one particular point. It says, achieving self-control. Yeah. Achieving self-control. And it says, so how can we overcome our bad habits? One great suggestion we heard is to remember the four R's. Remember the four R's. Number one, respect for God. Respect for God. Number two, respect for yourself. And that's very important. Learn how to respect yourself. 
How can you respect somebody else? You can't respect yourself. Think about it. Then number three, it says respect for others. So we got to respect God, respect ourselves, and respect others. And number four, accept responsibility for our own actions. That is so important as a child of God in the body of Christ is to recognize your own faults, your own failures, and then accept it. We're human beings. We make mistakes. We have character flaws. We, we do things we shouldn't do out of the will of God. And it's very important to accept responsibility for your action. You make a mistake, be quick to tell somebody, forgive me. I had an incident today where God cussed me out for a joke I said. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it in the first place. <laughs> and I got cussed out real bad. But you know what people God said? Shut your mouth, don't say nothing, you deserve it. <laughs> so I let him do what he had to say. I ain't say nothing. He walked out the building upset, still cussed me out on the way out the door. And, and I sat there and I said, Lord, I didn't mean for this to go like this. And, and so when he came back in the building, I looked at him, I said, forgive me. I said, it was not my intention to offend you in any kind of way. Please forgive me. And, and, and I said, because I don't want to do anything to hurt nobody. And a young man looked at me and said, okay, I got you. And he went and sat down. And, but he was so upset, and he went from zero to 100 in a second. It was, it was reminding me of Proverbs 15, chapter verse 1. It says, a soft answer turneth away wrath. Right? Yeah. Wrath is fury. Yeah. A soft, in other words, your response to an offense is going to fuel the fire or diffuse the fire. Yeah. And it says, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stirreth up anger. Yeah. So if you come to me offensive, and you make me angry enough to get out of character, and I retaliate as a child of God the same way you approach me, God said, that ain't the right response. That ain't Jesus' character. Mm -hmm. That's the characteristic of the human nature, the flesh, who wants to oppose God. Yes. Then it goes and says, when tempted to make wrong choice, I learn to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Then I pray for strength not to engage in that negative behavior. Number two, I search the Bible for a verse that deals with the bad habit I'm struggling with. Then I commit to memory the verses. To make a wise choice, I must determine to line up with the spirit of the word. Yeah. That is so true for every child of God. We all have some faults and failures in our lives, and God is saying we got to learn how to face the responsibility of our actions and then recognize how to deal with that situation. So whatever the issue is that I'm dealing with in my life, you're dealing with in your life, God said you need to pay attention. Find out what is the root cause of the issue. And then allow yourself to line up with the spirit of the word of God. And then number three, I continue to work at developing self-discipline. Hear what you said? I continue to work at developing self-discipline, which means we're getting involved with Christians, support groups, and daily spending time in the Bible reading and prayer. And that is so important as a child of God to stay connected to a local body somewhere where you can learn about self-discipline. Yeah. Self-discipline is something that's very important as a child of God because if I can't control my actions, well, every time somebody makes them say, I'm flying off a handle, you need to check your, your, your relationship with Christ because evidently something is wrong with you somewhere in your, your pipeline. Either your connection with God is shallow, like, like Wi-Fi. I'm going to use it for example. When you have a strong Wi-Fi signal, and you want to search the web, it goes, right? It flows pretty rapid. But if you don't have a strong signal, it begins to lag. Matter of fact, it'll freeze up on you, 
and it makes you frustrated. The Holy Spirit is the same way in our lives. We frustrate the Holy Spirit because we refuse to allow the Spirit of God to bring us a place of recognizing the error in our own ways. And God says, self discipline. Oswald Chambers gives us this valuable perspective on the purpose of prayer. So as long as you think you are self-sufficient, you do not need to ask God for anything. And that's all. Yeah. If you think you're self-sufficient without God, you need to ask God for nothing because you can fix it yourself. I know you don't, if I didn't need Jesus, I wouldn't receive salvation. Right? right? right. Because we need Jesus, now we come to God and ask for anything. He says to say that prayer changes things is not as close as to the truth as saying prayer changes me. And then I change things. And that is a true statement. Because if I ask God to change me, then the situation I'm doing with my life is going to change. Because now I'm giving God the ability to interact in my life to give me the power to overcome myself to change the situation. And check this out. And sometimes it means apologizing for something you didn't even do wrong. Because self-discipline doesn't mean you always done something wrong somebody. People might have a sense against you just because of who you are. And when they're offended, and you don't understand why they're offended, instead of you retaliating the same negative attitude, getting upset because they're upset with you, so I'm not speak them. matter of fact, I see them, I'm going around in another direction. I don't even want to talk to them. Guess what the Bible calls that? Immaturity. He said, you're immature. You're still acting like a baby. But then he goes on. So God has established things so that prayer on the basis of redemption changes the way a person looks at things. Prayer is not the matter of changing things externally, but one of working miracles in a person's inner nature. So the change takes place on the inside and manifest on the outside. That's what he's saying. And that's what we found out to be so true in our lives that when I recognize how much I need God in my life, and allow him to come into my heart to reveal to me my character faults. Then I give him the ability and permission. See, that's the thing God showed me something this week. Many times, we don't give God permission to come into our hearts to change us. If I have a bad habit and I'm comfortable with that habit and I've been doing the thing for many years, I don't want nobody to mess up my, my routine. I don't want you to come into and interact in my life and change something I'm not ready to give up. Right? And God is saying tonight, acquiring an offense keeps you from seeing your own character flaws because blame is deferred to another. That's our subject tonight. Acquiring an offense, that means I'm holding on to offense, keeps me from seeing my own character flaws. If you think about it, you'll you agree with that. Because if I'm holding on to anything somebody done to me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and never let go, never forgave that person, or forgave myself, and the person died and passed away, and I'm still holding on to offense. I've known people like that. Person dead and gone. They still hold on to offense. Yeah. And God been trying to heal, trying to deliver, trying to set them free. But because of the mindset, that's why I teach a lot about the mind, because the mind is where everything in our lives originates from. Mm -hmm. If I don't allow the Spirit of God to get right here, mm -hmm. to transform my thinking, if I get a thing that is Sandra, I'm going to hold on to that sense. Even though she may come and say, forgive me, I, I didn't mean to hurt you. If I did something to you and I didn't know I said something to you, forgive me. And, and I don't forgive her. I'm holding on to the fence. And the word says, because I'm blaming her for the fence. She might have even done anything, may have never done anything to me. But I'm blaming her for something she didn't even do. She might have said something to me, 
I'm having a rough day. And I said, how are you doing? And she snapped at me, not knowing she did because she was having a rough day. So I get offended. Instead of talking to her, I walk away offended. People come to church every Sunday. There's always somebody going to leave offended. And God is saying tonight, we need to recognize the signs of the enemy when offense is trying to get a hold of your heart. In our book, it says, as a couple, we held a lot of unforgiveness and hurts for many years. We got to the stage where we had very few friends. I was feeling isolated and unloved, even though I was faithfully attended an excellent church. Then I read the book, The Bait of Satan. Everything changed. I came face to face with my offenses and unforgiveness, and with God's help, I was set free. And this is the commentator who wrote this from Belfast, Ireland. So hiding from reality, hiding from reality. They are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Always ever learning and never come to knowledge of the truth. There's a lot of people been going to church for many years never come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. They're learning, they're studying, they stay, excuse me, they say they're applying the word of God to their heart, but they haven't let their self go. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that, I never let myself surrender to his lordship and his authority. Mm -hmm. So anytime someone done something to me, I hold them to their sense. And I walk around carrying the weight on my shoulder, a yoke on my neck, and I'm walking in bondage. I'm often asked, when should I leave the church or ministry team? How bad does it have to get? I respond, who sent you to the church you present in? You ever heard people tell you that I feel I need to leave this church because of something I said and said or something they didn't like in the church? And they, they come to you privately and want to tell you. They don't want to tell the pastor. They don't want to go to the pastor and tell them what, what reason why they said they didn't leave the church. So they left a thing. And I like the response. Who sent you to the church? Many times we go to church and we claim God sent us to a certain place until I get offended. Once I get offended, I leave the church. So now, like I talked about before, previous lessons, you become church hoppers. Yeah. You go from one place to the next place to the next place looking for a perfect church. And you go get offended every place you go. So you got a trail of offense following you in every direction you go in life because no matter where you go, I'm offended. Go to work, I'm offended. Go to the store, I'm offended. Because I don't like the way the clerk said to me or looked at me at the cashier register. So I'm offended. I go to a restaurant. I don't like the way they serve my food. So I'm offended. We find many reasons to become offended because of the attitude of the flesh. Have I been checked by the Spirit? Anybody got any questions or comments tonight? Any questions or comments? Thank you, Jesus. The majority of time, the answer God did. If God sent you, I reply, do not leave until God releases you. If the Lord is silent, check this out. If the Lord is silent, he is often saying, don't change a thing. So if I'm in the church, and I feel like I want to leave the church, and I feel in my spirit it's time for transition and you pray about it and you don't get an answer, don't do nothing. Stay right where you are until you get a sure word of prophecy in your spirit. It's time to transition. And you would know it. I've been in many places in ministry. And I went to different places. God put similar assignment. I was going to different churches, helping them establish their worship team. And I was staying there for a season. 
And then when my time came to an end, I felt the Spirit of God said, now it's time to go to another place. I'm going to send you. God sent me to different places only by divine direction. Right. It wasn't my own accord. When it come, I felt like I need to leave the church. It was when God said, now it's time to transition. I have another place. You have another assignment. When you come to church, you're on an assignment. Mm -hmm. You have an assignment to learn everything you need to learn about yourself and about God. All right. All right. You have to see it. You have an assignment to learn everything about yourself and about God to make sure you're lining up with the Word of God. If I don't line up with the Word of God, I'm just going to sit down. I ain't going to do nothing. Because I don't want to come before people and not do what God told me to do and then do it half heartedly. I've seen pastors do that. Half heartedly lead a church. And guess what? The church is off. Mm -hmm. I was one of those. It got to the point when I started ministry. Back in 2005, it started out well. And it reminded me when Paul said, you ran well, but what hindered you from obeying the truth? So the church was doing good. And when, it, when the year mark began to approach, everything slowly started dissolving. People started leaving the ministry. It eventually ended up dwindling down to two people, me and my wife. And guess what? I shut the church down. God can tell me to shut it down. I shut it down. Because of my feelings and emotions. And that's another point we have to deal with feelings and emotions. Because a lot of times, just because you're in your dry season, doesn't mean it's time to give up and run away. If God established something you to do in the kingdom, you do not leave until God tells you it's time to depart. If God doesn't tell you, and he's silent, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been consecrating, I've been seeking the faith of God, and I still don't have an answer. It might take a year for God to answer you. It might take two years. It might be ten years for God to answer you. But when he answers, it'd be a one-time work. Any agree with that? God does a one-time work. Yeah. When God does instruct you to leave, you will go out with peace no matter what the condition of the ministry is. Therefore, that's Isaiah chapter 55 verse 12. Isaiah 55 verse 12. Can, can you turn Isaiah 55 verse 12 for me? Isaiah 55? Yeah, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 12. It's a really good scripture. Isaiah 55 It says, For you shall go out with joy, be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. That's a prophetic word about transition. Because any time God transitions you, you're going to leave out with joy. Right. You're not going to leave out angry, upset, miserable, bitter, with malice in your heart, with hatred and jealousy. You're going to go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Because when God takes you to one place or another, there will be peace in your heart. I was taught this about, about 20 years ago by a pastor said under. He made this statement to the church. He said, anything that you're praying for God to do in your life, and you get peace in your heart about it, most of the time that's God doing it. He's leading you. He's guiding you to do what you have to pray and do. But if it comes to the place where God says, I want you to go over to a certain community, when you preach the gospel in that community, and also your flesh starts fighting against it, and you start doubting, well, I should. No, I shouldn't go. If I go over there, there's some gangs over there, or there's some trouble in that area, and if I go, I might get hurt. So your mind is second guess what the Holy Spirit says to do, right? So the Holy Spirit tells you, you go. He said, no, I don't want to go. Just like buying a house. If God takes you to a certain place and you walk in that house, you know it's not the house for you. It's going to bear witness to your spirit. Because any place God takes you, it's nothing new. He already spoke to you prophetically. And the word begins to magnify, begins to manifest itself in your life, magnify God in your life to where it gives you a confirmation where you know it's God speaking. And when I walk in a certain place, 
oh yeah, this, this is what God has. I, I feel it's what I need to be. And all of a sudden, your flesh said, oh, we don't need this neighborhood. This ain't a good neighborhood. And, you know, it's, it's, it's this type of people here. It's prostitutes down the street and all this stuff. But I heard God say this in the hospital. So who am I going to listen to? The voice of reasoning or the voice of the Holy Spirit? And the Holy Spirit says, you do what I told you to do because there's an assignment in the neighborhood. You never know by your act of obedience how God is going to tremendously bless you in a certain area. And he'll use you as an agent for the kingdom of God to bless many people. Therefore, you shall depart. He said, therefore, your depart would not, not be based on the actions or behaviors of others, but rather on the Spirit's leading. So leaving a ministry is not based on how bad things are. Leaving a ministry is not the reason to leave because things are bad. All right. You leave when the Holy Spirit says now it's time to uproot and be planted somewhere else in another house of God. Then you're going to add more to the kingdom. Amen. Any place you go, you're building. All right, yeah. And the Holy Spirit will teach you that you're building yourself to a higher place in the kingdom. And the higher elevation, the more I study God's word, the more I apply the word to my heart, the more I submit to the word of God, there's a higher elevation with a greater anointing. But check this out. The greater anointing, the greater devils. The greater anointing, the greater devils. Why? Because the devil don't want you to get to the place that I want you to go. If he can wreak havoc in your life to distract you and deter you from the will of God for your life, that's what he's going to do. Because you know, if I can keep you from entering to the place God has for you, you'll you miss the mark of the elevation. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you, this is a good word God has given. I, I love it. I love it. It says here, to lead with an offense, offended or critical spirit is not the plan of God. To lead with an offended and a critical spirit is not in the plan of God. And we have to be careful. If I allow a sense of any form to get into my heart, All right. mm -hmm. any form of sense, mm -hmm. what it says in the word, a little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. Right. A little sin corrupts the whole body. Amen. So we have to be careful. It's like if I eat too much candy, what's going to happen? I'm going to get sick because yeah. I ate too much. I knew I needed to take things in moderation, but because of greed of the flesh, the flesh will keep eating all the candy you want. Now you got sugar diabetes, got other health issues, because I kept eating all this junk. And now it messed me up. Why? Because I didn't listen to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit said, you can have a little bit and stop right there. But no, I had to overindulge in it, because that's what I wanted. My taste buds, like, I need this chocolate cake, I need this, this Snicker bar, I need this Kit Kat, I need all this stuff because my flesh wants it. Come on. Mine is barbecue chip. I love barbecue chip. And I'm sitting out with a whole bag of barbecue chip that did. Come on now. If I don't listen to the Spirit of God, so you need to stop right here. Just put you some in the bowl and put the rest back up. Come on now. Come on. Why? Because I eat too much, it's going to make me sick blood pressure rise. If you already deal with high blood pressure, why add to it? <laughs> when God speaks to me, he speaks properly. It is re reacting rather than acting on his guidance. It is reacting rather than acting on his guidance. Talk about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit says reacting is not acting. So I'm reacting, I'm listening to the leadership of the Holy Spirit to do what he's struggling to do so that I can walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. It says, For as many who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the what? Son. Son of the God, right? Amen. Notice, it does not say, for as many as react to difficult situations, these are the sons of God. 
It don't say that. It says be what? Led by what? The Spirit of God. If I'm led by the Spirit of God, I'm going to react according to the leadership of the Spirit, not according to the dictates of the flesh. And that's the issue we have in the body of Christ. We'd rather listen to the voice of reasoning, the dictates of the flesh, to react instead of being proactive. I talked about this last week. We need to learn how to be proactive instead of reactive to things that go wrong in our life. Just like the car breakdown. You getting all upset and all uptight and getting into a tizzy because the car that broke down is not going to fix the car. It's not going to make a difference. Until you take the car to a mechanic, let them look at the car, find out what's wrong with it, and fix the issue. So be proactive. Okay, Father, I thank you. My car that broke down. I want to thank you, God. Leave it to the right mechanic who's going who to be one to have my best interest in the heart. That's going to try to rip me off. They're going to fix my car the way it needs to be. I thank you in Jesus' name. I'm being proactive. Come on, trust in God to lead me to the right place. Reacting, you'll find an alley mechanic who don't really know what he's doing. Let him fall into the car. He tells you one thing wrong, but something else is wrong. See, that happened many times, being foolish. And when the Spirit of God leads you in wisdom, he says, go ahead and take it to the dealership. They can diagnose it, tell you what it really is, and then you have a mechanic who knows how to do the work. Take it to the mechanic, let them fix it at a lesser price. We have to learn how to walk in wisdom. Almost every time the word son is used in the New Testament, it comes from two Greek words, technon and huios. Technon and huios. A good definition for the word technon is one who is a son by mere fact of birth. So I'm born into the family as a son. My, when my first son, Addison, was born, he was John, John Bevere, just the author of the book, son by mere fact that he came from my wife and me. When he was in the nursery in the midst of other newborns, you could not recognize him as my son by personality. Mm. Okay. Even though he was my child, he didn't have my personality. Okay? When my friends and family came to visit, they would, pick, they would not pick him out except by name tag above his crib because he didn't look like us. That's what he's trying to say. He didn't have our character trait. He didn't look like us. He did not possess anything that set him apart. Addison would become, Addison would be considered a technon of John and Lisa Bevere. We find technon used in Romans chapter 8, verse 15 and 16. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 and 16. It, says, and it says, if we have received the spirit of adoption, so we have not received the spirit of bondage, again, the fear, but the spirit, we receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, our Father. Verse 16, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. Right? Amen. So it goes on. It says, it says because we have received the spirit of adoption, the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Technon of God. When a person receives Jesus Christ as Lord, he is a child of God by the fact the new birth experience. The other Greek word is translated sons, Sons, not son, with huios in the New Testament. Many times it's used in the New Testament to describe one who can be identified as son because he displays the character or characteristics of his parent. That is so good. Mm -hmm. Technon, I'm born into a family as a child, but I don't limit the character and the identity of my parents. Huios, born into the family of God, I got God's characteristics. I got his nature. I got his identity being displayed through my life. My son, Addison, grew. He started looking and acting like his father. When Addison was sick, Lisa and I took a trip and left him with my parents. My mother told my wife that Addison was almost a carbon copy of his dad. His personality was like mine when I was his age. And as he grown, he has become more and more like his dad. How can he, he, how, he can now be recognized as John Bevere's son, not only the fact of his birth, but also by the characteristics and personality that he resembles his father. We often identify with that. Because many times people come to you and tell you, oh, you look just like your mother. 
Oh, you look just like your father. Why? Because I'm born in the family. So I'm going to look like them. In the beginning, as a newborn babe, I might not even look like them until I begin to mature, grow up. Then I start resembling their nature. So to put it in simply, simply form, the Greek word techno means babies or immature sons. Check that out. Techno, babies or immature sons. The Greek word huios is, is most often used to describe, check this out, mature sons. All right, so if I'm born in the spirit, uh -huh. I'm born a mature child of God. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Again reads, for as many as led by the spirit of God, these are the sons, huios, of God. We can see it clearly that it is nature is that his that his mature sons who are led by the Spirit of God. Immature Christians are less likely to follow the leading of the Spirit of God. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to go to verse 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It says, I, brother, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. But as unto what? Carnal. Even as babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are you able to. Why? Immature. Babies. Because a baby is going to do baby stuff. I can expect a newborn baby to take some steak and chew it up. Why? They gonna choke. A newborn baby in Christ, we have to have patience, just like you do with a regular child. You gotta have patience, you have endurance, you have tolerance to deal with a baby. Because a baby gonna cry at any time of the night. They gonna wake you up out of your, your deep sleep. They gonna need to change you. They might even be hungry at three o'clock in the morning. And you have to get out of your comfort zone to feed a baby. Check this out. In the body of Christ, you have a lot of people who are still babies. Amen. They're called the pastor. Mm -hmm. 12 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. It happens to me quite often. Mm -hmm. People will call me any time of the night. Need me to pray for them because they deal with the situation they can't handle themselves. Because they haven't matured enough to handle their own situation. So I have to be one who's a steward of the word of God, one who's prayed of, one who's listened to the voice of the spirit, so when people do come to me with issues, I'm not going to get into agreement with your issue. I'm going to give you the word of God to overcome the issue. And that's the thing we have to learn as children of God. We have to have patience with people who are not grown up yet in the body of Christ when they should have matured by now, but they're, they're not grown up yet because they're still dipping and dabbing in their mess. And we have to be one of those say, okay, you know what? I see where you are. I see who you are. I see what's going on. So I'm, you know what? I'm just going to be patient. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to listen to the Spirit. I'm, I'm not going get, to get in my flesh. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to fight you. I'm just going to pray with you and tell you what God says about you. Because the word of God has the ability and the power to convict and change lives and perfect those who are weak in their faith. Amen? Amen. Looking for another scripture. I'll find it later. And then I'll Anybody got any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? Anybody? Hallelujah. Everybody quiet today. Nobody want to talk to me, huh? I'll talk to you. Uh, one of my comments is um, I just thank 
God for a word on tonight um, and how uh, it just corresponds with uh, the way I feel about where we should be at in life. And it also shows us, you know, where we need to be at as we stay in the word of God, as God begins to really work on our awesome. spirits and bring us to the word of God. I just want to thank you uh, for Amen. this lesson. It's an awesome lesson. And I don't know who you said that book is by, but I would like to have that book. This one? And, yeah. That's one it's um, Queen Shearer, Queen Shearer, and uh, Ruth Ann Garlock. But I just wanted to say, you know, um, that I thank God for that because when you sit up, you just can't sit still in your seat because, you know, so much of what you're touching on is what we struggle with in our lives, you know, and don't want to be real with ourselves, but we want to go that next step, but we don't mm -hmm. know how to take it. It's just like a baby when they're yeah. walking and they you know, and they, they stumble. Yeah, and they stumble and they fall, and that's how we do, you know, mm -hmm. um, in the flesh, fighting with it daily, 24-7. Uh, you know, we just got to do something about that. So that's I thank right. God for the word. Amen. Uh, and you're right about that. Yeah. We do. We stumble. We make mistakes. Mm -hmm. We have shortcomings. Mm -hmm. We're we going to mess up. We, we get mad. We get in our flesh. And, and God's trying to get us to mature. Like, well, like Paul told the church of Corinthians. Because I came to you, desire to feed you the meat of the word, but you still don't milk. Mm -hmm. you, you got a lot of people still don't milk in the body of Christ. First Peter, first Peter chapter two, verse two. First Peter chapter two, verse two. Okay. I would find this, but I had to find out. That was just in my spirit. And, and that's the thing, is when God is trying to speak to us, we, we get caught up in ourselves and we shut out the voice of the Holy Spirit. Me and Pastor Owens on the radio program, we always talk about the ear gate. The ear gate is a vital part of the body of Christ because he that has an ear, isn't that what the word says? Let him, what, hear what the spirit says to the church. If I'm not listening to the voice of the spirit, how can I get instruction? How can I mature? How can I grow up? If I'm not listening to the voice of the Spirit, when God has a message come forth on Sunday mornings, and during my prayer time, devotion time, I'm studying the Word of God, and I'm not listening, how can I mature in the things of God? First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it says, As newborn babes, desiring the sincere milk of the Word, that ye, there, that ye may grow thereby. Verse 3 says, If be so, ye have tasted of the Lord's Says that the Lord is gracious. Why? Because we know what, how God is. We, we tasted his word. Right. We, we know what the word feels like when it's going down into our spirit. But he said, you, you're still babies. Mm. On milk, when you need to be growing up. And a lot of people are complacent being a baby in the body of Christ. They're comfortable. They don't want to advance. They don't want to decline. They don't want to stay right where they are and never Mature in the things of God. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so much animosity that creeps into the house of God and people Amen. find themselves falling out with one another so easily. You know, like, go ahead. It's like the growth that a baby gets by drinking milk, they grow. Mm -hmm. And we grow when we receive the word of God. Mm -hmm. So many of us, we don't want the milk of the word. We want to go right to the meat. Oh, yeah. right. Because the newborn babies can't eat meat, it will mess up their stomachs and they pretty much can't swallow it. And when we take in, we try to take in the meat too quick, we start to bump it up. Absolutely. Because there's stages of advancing and growth. You don't take a baby and expect the baby to start walking the same day as born, right? <laughs> that makes sense. A newborn baby, you gotta watch that baby get fatter, you gotta nurture that baby, you gotta clean that baby, you gotta take care of that baby. If you got a baby, so you got to make sure they treat your baby with respect, love your baby the way you love your baby in their house. Right? right. And, and so when the baby is advanced to the next stage, what is the toddler stage? When they're starting, starting to learn how to walk. Yeah. Once they start walking, they stomp and they're falling. I remember my, my son, when he was, when he was a, a little, little toddler, and, and he first started walking, mom was at work, and he started to walk, and, and um, he stumbled. And I said, you can do it. Said, Come on, just get back up. You can do it. And he stood up, and then he eventually took the steps towards me. Why? Because it takes patience. Yeah. They're not going to automatically start walking right away. It's a process. Then he goes from being a, a toddler to what? To a, a, a little child, right? Yeah. Go ahead. You will fall more times than you walk. 
Absolutely. Yes. They fall more. Yes. Even in life as you become an adult. You know, if you don't have more failures, then you will have a conscious Yes, then they become a grade school child. And then from the grade school child, they become what? Middle school, then high school. Because of the advancement in stages. And these stages brings changes in your character, changes in your mindset, changes in your attitude, changes in your desires, changes in the things you want, the things you don't like anymore. I love Brussels sprouts. I always love this other child. I don't like Oprah, but I used to eat Oprah growing up. Why? Because I change as I get older. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. We go through advanced stages of growth in the body of Christ. Certain things that used to would bother me doesn't bother me anymore because I don't learn the word how to deal with the errors that bother me the most. Right? We have to learn to develop and have the patience in the process of developing. So like Paul says, he said, you're still babies. Newborn babies desiring to send still milk of the word. Right. When you should have matured by now after 20 years, you should be further off than you were in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, well, when I think about that, I also think about the fact that some people don't want to grow up the word because mm -hmm. the Bible says when you know the truth to walk therein. But if you know the truth and the truth is going to stop you from doing what you want to do, yeah. then right. you're not going to want to do Absolutely. And that, that's so true. That is so true, because they don't want to stop what they're doing. Just like a, like a person that, that's an alcoholic, and they get delivered, get saved, to the Holy Ghost. And also you revert backwards, and you take one drink, it takes you further than you plan on going, and you stay long, you plan to stay. So now, when God is trying to draw you out again, it's a struggle, it's a problem, it's an issue. So I'm stuck again. I don't advance past it, because my mind is in a place where this is the normal way of living. And that's the thing that he makes you think. He makes you be deceived in thinking the way you're living is the wise way to live when all of a sudden it's destroying you from the inside out. God been dealing with me about that ever since I preached that message concerning about the fire. Share with me to go on the fire. Because a lot of times God will let you get in heated situations. See what your attitude will be. I, I learned that today. If I had retaliated with the same attitude I used to 10 years ago, I would have been in a fight and probably in the jail. But because the Holy Spirit been teaching me, this book, like I said, this book has been transforming my life. I can truly say this. It's been changing my mind, changing my attitude, changing my life. Because I've been teaching this for a while. I read it already before. But each time I'm teaching it now, it's something different. I'm learning from the fight of my life. And so it's teaching me how to be. Tell to shut my mouth sometimes. Don't say certain things. Just because you're mad and somebody upset you, you want to say what is on your mind, I'm going to give you peace of my mind. And let's take it to the street. Hold this and nope. Sit down and be quiet. Just listen. I don't want to do that. My flesh don't want to sit down and be quiet. I'm just keeping it real. If I would have acted upon my flesh today, when the young man came to me and did, I would have been in a fight. I'm just keeping it real. But because of the discipline, the self-control of the Holy Spirit, which is one of the fruit of the Spirit, right. temperance. Mm -hmm. If I had to learn about temperance, mm -hmm. I would have acted instead of being proactive. Mm -hmm. I would have done just what my flesh was rousing up to do, retaliate. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost said, no, just be quiet. Don't say nothing. And I heard the voice of the Spirit say, I'll keep you in perfect peace as your mind stayed on me. And my spirit stayed calm the whole time. I didn't get upset. I didn't get uptight. I was like, oh my God. Like, wow, Jesus, you are working on me. You know? <laughs> so like that happened. You, you used to respond in a certain way. You know something's changing in you when you don't act the same way when folk approach you the wrong way. That's growth. That's a sign of maturity. And God will begin to validate. I love this. God told me this morning to the reason why you're able to stay calm in your spirit and not act upon your flesh because you're maturing yes. in discipline. Yes. Yes. Maturing in discipline. If I hadn't listened to the voice of the spirit, things would have been really, really thrown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. Could have been worse than chaotic. But as the spirit of God began to show me just be still. Peace be still. I started praying inwardly. Oh God, touch his heart. Touch his mind. Calm his spirit. Because 
I knew I shouldn't have said what I said, which caused the situation in the first place, and the Holy Ghost said, repent. So the young man came and I repented. You know, I thank God that we're learning to be quick. That's what the spirit of reconciliation is all about. He said he gave to every child of God the spirit of reconciliation. Yes. We don't have to point it though. We don't do what God said do when stuff happens. We get mad at somebody. We do not act upon it because our flesh don't want to let us. But the Spirit of God says this. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will lift you up. When you humble yourself, the Lord himself will fight your battle. You ain't got to lift a finger. I've seen it happen many times in my life. So we got to get in the Word Allow the Spirit of God to provoke you to maturity. Mm -hmm. God will let you get in a heated situation to see what your response is really going to be. He'll do that. He'll let stuff happen. Deliberately to see what your response is going to be. Mm -hmm. You haven't been tried yet? Wait, wait, you will. It's going to happen. Okay. And as Addison grows, he will progress in the character development. The more mature he becomes, the more responsibility I will entrust in him. It is wrong for him to stay immature. It is not God's will to remain babies. All right. It is not in the plan, the purpose, the will God has for your life to stay a baby. God will provoke you to grow up. Amen. Amen. He will provoke you to grow up. Mm -hmm. God knows your level of maturity. He knows your mentality. He knows when you are in the spirit. He will provoke you to grow up. And then you got some that's like an old Billy dog. I ain't moving. I'm going to stay the same way. I'm going to stay stubborn and stiff necked in the body of Christ. Children of Israel, just like that, God called them stiff necked people because they had an attitude to keep on rebelling against God when God delivered out of situation, out of situation, out of situation, and they go right back to the same old mess again. We do it. In today's time, the same sin, different method. Same sin, different method. And we find ourselves in the same predicaments over and over and over. Jesus called, he said, no man puts his hand to the plow and then looks back. It's not fit for the kingdom. So you're like a dog returning to his farm. We do it all the time. We go back to the stuff God brought us out of, and we go back to it because the flesh said, no, come on, let's go back. You know you were comfortable doing this. You were comfortable acting this way. You were comfortable being around folk and cussing and slam, doing all the stuff that they're doing. You got to fit in the crowd. So I hide my identity of Christ so I can fit in the crowd. I used to be one of those too. Get around people. I'm going to cuss around being a preacher. I'm going to cuss around folk that they, I'm used to being around and cuss. Then I'm going to drink with them, I'm going to party with them, and I hide my identity of Christ. And the Lord started convicting me. So who are you? Are you my child? Or are you Satan's child? And the Lord said, you should not have to hide your true identity, Superman. Superman hid his identity until a situation arrives. And what do he do? He goes into a phone booth, come out, change the Superman. But before he can walk in, in a disguise, working in the day of you. Why? Because we do that in the body of Christ. We have our own disguise yes. that we put on so people don't know the true identity of who I really am for Christ. And when God is trying to provoke you, he's looking for you to stand up in the identity of Jesus Christ and let Christ be revealed through you. Every day, Christ needs to be revealed. He said, no man takes a candle and, and hides it under a bushel. Mm -hmm. He said, but you set it on a, on a lampstand that it will give light and all who see it may see the light. Right? And that's what Christ is in our life. He's the light that shines in the world. Mm -hmm. He said, like a city cannot be hidden. You can't hide him. No matter how you try, remember, I'll never forget this. Young and ministry, going to clubs, partying, hanging around folk, doing what everybody else is doing. But every time I got drunk, I'm talking about Jesus. Because that's all I knew. All I knew was Jesus. So the more I try to hide it, people come in, are you a preacher? No, I ain't a preacher. 
Yes, you are. You, you that, that pastor's son. And I don't know him. I would deny it, right? But as soon as I got drunk, or oh, yeah, Pastor Henry, or Grandma Henry, or whoever I was at the time, and, and all of a sudden, hey, hey, you know Jesus loves you? You need to give your heart to Jesus. I mean, Jesus loves you. And he died on the cross for you too. You know, if, if you don't give your life to Jesus, you know what I am. That's how I was. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, folks still do it today. <laughs> <laughs> you fooling yourself. Exactly. He who thinks he stands, what does it say? Take heed lest he fall. Right. We're going to end at this point tonight because it's so important. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the higher heart. Right. So you couldn't hide your identity. I could not hide my identity, but I try. It still reveals itself every single time. And that's how God is in us. Yes, yes. He reveals himself mm -hmm. even when you try to hide him. If you yeah. really love God yeah. and you try to hide it, you can't hide it for too long. Uh -huh. Something will strike a conversation. Yeah. You're going to shift. Yeah. Start talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time in my life. I be hanging around a bunch of people who are heathen and they ain't talking about Jesus. I'm listening to them talk and I'm engaging in conversation. And all of a sudden, Somebody say a certain word is a trigger word to bring out Christ. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Christ being revealed. All right. So I just want to encourage you tonight. Yes. Let Christ be revealed. Allow the Holy Spirit to bring you to a place of self-discipline. Mm -hmm. No matter what you go through, don't let the enemy pull you out of your character. All right. We talk about it all the time to our leaders. We have character, we have integrity. Who are you loyal to? Who's your dependency on? Your integrity is your honesty and loyalty to God. You're going to stand for who you are. And your character is going to line up with who Jesus is. So no matter where you are, the grocery store, the department store, no matter at the mall, Christ is going to always be revealed through you. I love the twins, Denise and Devin. They always talk about Jesus. Everywhere they are, they talk about Jesus. Because that's who they know. And that's who they are. They, they exemplify his character everywhere they go. Not saying they don't have faults and failures. We all do. Yeah. But they always talk about Jesus. I've never heard, not one time, they never talk about Jesus. Even when I come around, they always talk about Jesus. Why? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We need to put them out there. Let people know I serve a God who can change your life. Yes, yes. He can blow your mind. Right. He can set you free from the inside out. All you got to do is be willing to say, Lord, here I am. I surrender. Yes. You might be one of those tonight who don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You got a question? No, I have something to say. Go ahead. During the study, uh, you was mentioning something about where
don't want to bring that mess into my life. I got and prayed and it was yeah. the Holy Spirit like, go, be chosen, go. So I went and I hung down. I hung down. I hung down. I was like, don't get mad. And I just, and I just said, thank you. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Oh, and that's why you had me to go ask them because there was something that you wanted Amen. to show them. Amen. That is so true. That is so true. That's what you call that discipline. Yes. Like we talked about in the beginning, self-discipline, self-control. Because when you listen to the Spirit, He will give you that self-control right. at the time you need it the most. Right. He released all that world of principles. Yes. Of Amen. 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 Anybody else got any questions or comments before we get ready to um, go? Amen. So you might be watching tonight. If you stand here, see if we're can I hear just a second? You might not know Jesus, your Lord and Savior. I was encouraged to get to know him. Give your life to Jesus. The word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. You may be one of those who need that everlasting life tonight. You may have the relationship with the Lord. Don't know Jesus as personal Savior in your life. And the word says, that when God has done confess that mouth, the Lord Jesus believe in our heart that God raised us from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the mouth of faith in the heart man believes unto righteousness. You might not know Jesus as Lord and Savior tonight, but tonight you can get to know him. Tomorrow's not promised to you. Yeah. You might walk out of your house, might be in your house and die in your sleep. It doesn't matter where you are. When your time comes to go, you're going to go. So I encourage you to give your life over to Jesus and believe that he can save you and you will be born again. So I want you to repeat after me this one simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Knowing and unknowing me. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pray that prayer tonight. The whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner and turn their life over to Jesus Christ. So you all have a blessed name. So Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this lesson. Oh God, I pray that it touched our hearts, change our lives, convict us in areas we need to be convicted to change, oh God, provoke us to change, empower us by your spirit to surrender our lives to you, oh God, to yield and release all cares and concern into your hands and you will deliver and set us free from the inside out. I thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name, that we grow in grace and in the knowledge of who you are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are this. We're going to think of an offering tonight. We've got an offering too. You want to sow a seed on Facebook tonight into our, our, our class. Feel free to sow a donation. It goes right to the ministry. Amen. And God is just looking for to bless you. Sometimes we hold our blessings back and we don't want to give. When you give, you come back to your good matches, press down, shake together, run out your hand, give it to your bosom, say it's the spirit of you got. You all have a blessed night. Until next week, Tuesday, we'll be streaming live from our home. And then the following Tuesday, we'll be here in the church. So every other Tuesday, we're going to be streaming from the church. So if you follow us on Facebook, we're streaming every other Tuesday in the church. And often uh, in Tuesdays, we're in my home. God bless you. Have a good night.